come. All right, Tyron, so this is the first time there's been black guys in the co-main and the main event. Mm -hmm. like how, how big of a moment does this feel for you? Shit, black, green, purple, they all got to get it. It's not to be some black on black crime. Black on black crime. I'm from Ferguson. I didn't seen it before. Well, so how do you see that black on black crime going? Like, do you see? Do you? Th oh, sorry, that was a bad joke. Do you think Usman's like a worse version of you? Because that's. Do that again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I, if, if if we want to use that analogy, I see the chalk being um, traced around him. I've seen you in tactical fights before against Maya, against Thompson, and then I've seen you just go out and take the guy out like until. If you could predict which way this fight's going to be, which way is it going to be? Are you going to take him out early? I mean, that's such a generic question, but how do you see it going? I mean, I never go out there and say, you know what, this fight I'm going to play it safe and I'm going for the decision. I'm always going for the knockout. Certain guys are make it a little bit more difficult to get to the knockout, and certain guys um, aren't within range where you can land punches. Wonder Boy played a crazy different range. Damian Maya was on my legs 50 times, so it's kind of hard to swing at a head that's not in the air. It's on your leg. And um, you obviously got to focus on defending the shot, that that becomes your priority. So with these guys, that, that you know, Till came forward and he punched and I punched with him. You know, Kasha came forward. Robbie, Robbie was backing up and I came forward. So I'm always trying to knock everybody out anyway. So it's going to be nothing different in, in this fight. I don't go out there and say, you know, let me play this tactical. But fighting smart, people confuse fighting smart with fighting safe. That means I'm trying to fuck you up still but I'm not going to be dumb about it. I'm not just going to swing wide and open myself up. You still can try to knock somebody out, and you can be safe and protective while you're doing it. Is that an apt comparison to like Floyd Mayweather? Because he's a similar where he makes these adjustments and doesn't take a lot of risks, yeah. but he knows what to do to win. Would you say that you're kind of similar? Um, I, I would say that um, I can't say that I'm similar to Floyd just because his defense is off, off this, you know, off this stratosphere right now. You know, nobody was able to hit him, and he fought against a who's who, and he made Canelo miss. He made Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Haddon, Cotto, everybody you can think of. But what I, what I, <laughs> he getting right, he getting John with there. Um, what I try to do is I try to make a miss and make him pay. And in MMA, our gloves are smaller. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit bigger. I punch a little bit harder. So like, I was just watching a couple of clips. When I fought Damian Maya, there's a couple of times he threw a punch and I fade back and I punch him. He fall back, or I slip a punch and I punch him. So it's one thing when you make somebody miss, but when you make a miss and you make him pay, it makes him not want to throw that shot again. So if it becomes a leg kick, they throw the leg kick and you hit them with a combination and now you kick them. They're not going to be wanting to throw the leg kick. Same thing with a jab. If I just bend your jab to the right, come back left hook, right hand. If I defend to left, right hand, left hook. If I go underneath the punch to the body, if I slap it down and kick you in the head, I just made you not want to throw a jab again. So now if you can't throw your jab, you can't throw your kick, you took a shot, you had to punish and get paid, you threw a right hand, you got to punish and get paid. So now everything that he's thinking about throwing that he's worked on, he's not going to be able to do because he had to pay a consequence for it. And that's what I do. I try to do that to Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy wasn't able to go and do the stuff he did against everybody else. Maya wasn't able to even get any ground game in. So it's going to be a good night. Good night for me. Bad night for him. Did you see uh, Colby Covington supposedly coming to Saturday night's fight? He should have been fighting in it. I mean, he can come all he want. He could have came September and signed up for the fight. He could have signed up for this fight. So I'm not focused on Colby. I'm focused on Usman. Usman's a tougher opponent. Um, he's not wearing as um, tacky as clothes as Kobe or saying the corniest jokes. But um, he's a tougher opponent, so that's where my focus is at. If you could, though, the UFC are going back to Chicago. You versus Colby would be a good fight for that card. I'm with it. I'm with it. Got to pay me a little extra money because he's been sitting around on his ass watching me whoop everybody butt. So um, I'm not against it. So definitely you you, you are uh, clearly focused on Usman, uh, but you did have some designs on the 185 uh, belt at some point this year. Yeah. Given the chaos going on, have you been just watching that with one eye and uh, keeping an eye out for any particular matchups you like? Um, I think these guys are going to fight, right? The um, um, Israel and Kelvin. Mm -hmm. And then the winner that's going to fight... Um, was that one of the fight, um, Robert? Worker. Yeah, so I'll be in perfect time. I, I had this fight, probably fight Kobe, and maybe, shit, who knows, maybe me and um, maybe Kobe um, and, and I fight around the same time. Whitaker um, fights um, the winner of that, and we can kind of get it on. I mean, you think about it, Whitaker's a welterweight. It's just really not out of cut weight, you know. He got knocked out by Wonderboy, guy fought twice. Kelvin Gaston already beat him. 
he's a welterweight that just can't find a diet that works for him. So these are really welterweights, and I'm not. I walk around 200 pounds. I'm not little. I'm not. I'm not like a guy that's you know 185 and he's just cut 15 pounds. Like I'm legit 200 pounds on a day to day. Would you drop your 170 pound belt and move up full time, or would you try and double no. champion it? Nope. Do you see anybody else drop their belt? You see Conor drop his belt. You see DC drop his belt. No. Things happen where these guys maybe have to give it up. No, I don't. I think if 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 I go through these next two fights the way that I plan on doing it, have I not cleared out the welterweight division? Could I not go up to the middleweight, get that belt, and then let these guys sort it out? Maybe Pontinivio beat up somebody else and looks great. And now I may come down and fight him, but it, they, these guys got to shuffle the deck a little bit. Like I've already, there's no point in me going to rematch guys I already beat up on. You know, these are the last two opponents left for me. So now it's time for me to continue to set new goals and continue to challenge myself. So we, we've seen all these super fights, and you've called some up, but you know haven't been able to uh, to get get the lucky straw on that one. Uh, but now, is it a source of pride that that you are one of the few champions that are just defending the the title in your division? Um, I mean, I always say pride in every time I fight. You know, whether it's me fighting a super fight, which I've never fought before, or me fighting against a number one contender. But now it's at a point where I'm, I'm, I don't want I don't want to look at a fight for I want to fight this guy because it's a big draw and a big pay per view. I want to fight fights that are gonna you know cement my legacy, and I feel like I'm gonna become a super fight. Guys are starting to want to fight me and want to talk about fighting me. And I think after beating Usman on Saturday, beating Kobe, going up against the middleweight belt, now the fight that I was chasing, now I've become that fight. After George retired, I think you left a comment on a, a post by Errol Hawani saying that you'd love to meet George in a, a gym and just sort of mix it up. Did you ever hear Did you ever hear anything back from it? You know, I was in training camp. I mean, I got George's number. I can hit George up. George, George and I are friendly. I see George, you know, at Walker Boxing occasionally. I've done a movie with him once. If, if I reach out to train with George, I don't see him having a problem with it. Would that be fun for you? I mean, it's not in the cage, I mean, but it's... A, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't watch him, you know, coming up and watch his, the way that he, um, you know, ran over the division. I'm pretty sure I can learn one or two things from him that can help my game plan. I'm sure it'll be fun. It's just, you know, I wasn't able to compete against him in the octagon, but I can challenge myself and, and um, do it in a safe, healthy way in a, um, in, a, in a gym and actually have somebody that can push me, that can, you know, do have great time and have great takedowns, great top game, great you know bottom where I can not have to have four or five different training partners that really can get out of one partner.